Greetings. This is a Sankong heated shoe and boot dryer with ozone generator, which I picked up from Amazon. As you can see, it'll take boots on the top of these adjustable arms. And it has a timer. It's got an on-off, it's got a run timer, which is accessed if you turn it on. You can adjust the the run time up to 99 minutes and it's also got a, a, de a delay timer where you can set how long it's going to take before it kicks in so if, at the moment out of the box its default setting is a six hour delay and a 20 minute run so also you get these up lock it into place it has locked already, there we go, and you can adjust that and then drop a shoe in over that and it'll run hot ozone, well, hot air and ozone if you've got it turned on throughout the, um, throughout the shoe to kill germs and give you nice toasty shoes. Anyway, it's not here to show you how it works, it's here to have a look what's inside. And the first thing I had to do when I got it was replace the fuse because that is a 13 amp fuse and the plug is only rated at 3 amps so it's now got a 3 amp fuse in it let's check out that fuse anyway see what it's like inside they're supposed to be filled with sand not just fuse wire so let's take a look so we can get the cap off with the wrong pliers oh there we go Right, there's no sand in there. Let's try this MK fuse. There's sand in that one. Well, there was, until I just poured it out. I should do a quick rundown of these settings, though. It's got a preset stroke temperature button here, and this is the delay timer, so you can set anything from half hour up to 9.5 hours and then 10 to 24 in one hour increments and that will set how long before it starts then if you turn on either drying or ozone this is the timer for how long it'll actually run for it's at 1 to 99 minutes So there's no actual temperature controls here. The temperature setting is high, low, or just the fan. So that's a 234 watts, I think, or 235 watts, 134, 135 watts, and then no heating at all. It's about three and a half watts for the fan itself. You know, four screws under the feet as well. So that's now coming apart. I can disconnect the front section from the display and here's what we've got there's a 12 volt fan there's a heating element with thermal cutout at the front and thermal fuse through the back that's got two connections coming back so it's not a dual element design it is actually uh, it's adjusting the duty cycle of the element which is dimming the element and you've also got these black wires here which go to the ozone generator which is a wire in a tube I think I've seen, I've seen these before is that just a U is that a UVC tube? That might just be a UVC tube. I think it's a UVC tube. I do have a UVC um, test thing there. I'll, uh, I might have a, te a test of that later on. Because to be fair, with that enclosed, you couldn't see that tube at all. That was completely sealed in. So. Uh, 
I haven't run the thing in complete darkness, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of um, anything leaking out of there. But you've got this tube running off its own little circuit board there, which has uh, an AC input from this board. So we've got the mains coming in. This is the dealing with all the mains voltage stuff, and it's got its connection going off to the the control board at the top. Now I thought that was a UVC tube, but it's not because I've tested it with the UVC test strip and it doesn't make that fluoresce at all. Uh, it does generate ozone though, if I just switch that on. If I knock the big light off. Turn that off because it's making the room stink of ozone. Now here's the circuit board that's driving that tube, and if you look at the schematic, there's not an awful lot to it. It's just a current limited supply with a triac alternately shorting and not shorting the transformer and the capacitor, and with a diode return. So it's just pulsing that circuit 50 times a second. Now here's the control board on top. And if you look at the schematic, you can see it's got some weird custom chip in there, which is doing a lot of jobs on each of the pins. Some of the pins are driving both the front panel LEDs and segments on the seven segment displays and controlling the buttons. So they've optimized the use of the different pins, although it does mean the circuit diagram is a bit of a tangle. Now, I wasn't actually going to take that bit apart, but you'll see why I did in a moment. If we look at the board which switches the motor and the heater and the ozone generator, you can see there's got, amongst other things, there's a switch mode power supply over on the right hand side which drives the rest of it. And it's a completely non-isolated driver. The ground reference for everything there, all the, the supposedly low voltage stuff, including that entire top panel, is all referenced direct to the incoming AC supply. In fact, it's the, the live wire, the, the AC line terminal, the brown wire. So the reason I wanted to take that top section apart was to make sure that the buttons on it were actual proper buttons and not the little metal clicky cap things. Because the last thing you want is for the plastic to start to fail and all of a sudden you've got live clicky caps underneath. So there you have it, one germicidal boot dryer. Thanks for watching.